Let's start with the 82nd example. Now in the arrangement shown in figure, the masses M of the bar and capital M the wedge are as well as the wedge angle are far known to us. The masses of the pulley and the thread are negligible, the friction is absent. Find the acceleration of wedge. So as we have to find the acceleration of wedge, let us suppose capital A is the acceleration of uh, a wedge and from the figure it is uh, very clear due to the action force of uh, this particular mass the wedge will constrain to move in this direction so capital a is the acceleration of wedge in this direction okay while uh, ax is the acceleration of bar along inclined wedge and uh, ay is the acceleration of the bar uh, perpendicular to incline okay so now if you see carefully if you consider both the motion if the wedge get displaced by a distance say x so if the wedge is displaced by x so this will be the displacement x so the string will come down along x axis okay and uh, the, with, uh, along the along the inclined plane if you see along the inclined plane the component of the wedge will be so along the inclined plane it will be displacement of wedge in bracket 1 minus cos alpha therefore the acceleration of the bar uh, uh, in the direction along the wedge is acceleration of wedge in bracket 1 minus cos alpha that is the constraint relationship between these two second it will get also perpendicular to the wedge this relation is being already derived if the wedge is get displaced by x then in the perpendicular direction to the wedge surface it gets by y and this is alpha so i can say y is equal to x sin alpha it means the acceleration of wedge perpendicular to the direction perpendicular to the incline is uh, a in capital a sin alpha that is the second constraint relation so as we have got the constraint relation ax and ay in terms of a and the main thing is we need to find a so i'll write or uh, now i will draw the fbd and write the equation in terms of a so first of all let's draw the fbd of small m along the inclined surface and perpendicular to the inclined surface so along and perpendicular to the inclined surface the components of the weight are directly known to us mg cos alpha and mg sin alpha due to the reaction from the wedge surface will be here and tension in the string will be here now we have two accelerations it is going down along the wedge with ax acceleration and perpendicular to the wedge with ay acceleration that is known to us so i can write the first equation as mg sin alpha minus t is equal to m ax so mg sin alpha minus t is equal to m into what is ax so obviously ax is a in bracket 1 minus cos alpha so therefore we have got the first unknown tension as mg sin alpha minus small m into capital a 1 minus cos alpha this is our equation 3 uh, which gives us unknown capital T in terms of A. We will write all equations in terms of capital A because this is the only thing we have to find. Second, now AY direction. So in AY direction, this minus this will be MAY. So I can write MG cos alpha minus normal reaction will be M into AY. So MG cos alpha minus normal reaction. AY is nothing but acceleration of wedge into sin alpha. So now I can write m a, a normal reaction force as small mg cos alpha minus small m capital A sin alpha. That is our equation for again I have written n in terms of unknown capital A. Now directly I will draw the FBD of the wedge itself. So the FBG, FBD of the wedge, this is angle alpha inclined. So that's the tension T acting here and tension T is acting in this direction as well as the normal the normal force is acting in this direction so as the wedge is having acceleration in the horizontal direction because it is constrained to move only in horizontal direction because of this uh, rigid surface uh, bottom surface it will not move vertically up and down it will move only horizontally 
so as we have only horizontal acceleration so we will resolve all forces along horizontal and vertical so if this is alpha this will be alpha so this component will be t cos alpha this component will be t sin alpha this is alpha this is 90 minus alpha so this will be alpha so the component of n is n cos alpha and component of n is n sin alpha as we are only interested in these components which are acting horizontally so the, the equation that we are getting from newton's law it will be t plus n sin alpha they are in the same direction minus t cos alpha in the opposite direction gives capital m into a now substituting the value of t from equation 3 and substituting the value of uh, n from equation 4 i will get only one unknown that is a okay so let's substitute first of all i will bring these two t these two t's together so that easily i can substitute so t in bracket 1 minus cos alpha plus n sin alpha is equal to capital m a now substitute the value of t so take the sub take the value of t from equation 3 here i will substitute so i will write it with the red color to avoid confusion so in place of t i am writing mg sin alpha minus small m into capital a in bracket cos alpha be careful with capital m and small m here the only small m is there in place of t while here this outside the bracket 1 minus cos alpha as it is in place of t we have written this much and this as it is okay now n now i have to substitute the value of n so we are substituting the value of n from here from equation number 4 i will write down here so the plus sign as it is and in place of n i am writing again i will write this with a red color to avoid confusion in place of n i am writing mg cos alpha minus small m capital a sin alpha while outside the bracket sin alpha this is sin alpha which is as it is and finally this whole thing is equal to capital m a now what we have to do is we have to just multiply this m1 minus cos alpha to this term and this term so let's open the bracket so mg sin alpha multiplied by 1 minus cos alpha minus m a in bracket 1 minus cos alpha minus minus cos alpha so it will be 1 minus cos alpha the whole square again this n sin alpha will also get multiplied with this and this so it will be equal to mg cos alpha sin alpha minus small m a sin square alpha is equal to capital m a now multiply open this bracket so it will be mg sin alpha minus mg sin alpha cos alpha minus okay so let's open this bracket m a in bracket so it will be a square plus b square minus 2 a b minus 2 a b plus m g cos alpha sin alpha minus m into capital a sin square alpha is equal to capital m into capital a this is also capital a so negative mg sin alpha cos alpha positive mg sin alpha will get cancelled out so it will be mg sin alpha minus okay this ma will go inside so it will be small m into capital a minus plus minus small m into capital a cos square alpha minus minus plus 2 small m into capital a cos alpha minus small m into capital a sin square alpha is equal to capital m a okay and now these a terms can be taken as together so m g sin alpha will be equal to i will send this all terms on this side so that capital m into a plus small m into a plus small m into a cos square alpha minus 2 small m into a cos alpha minus m a sin square alpha this is minus m a sin square alpha when it goes on this side it becomes plus okay 
so i have taken this this term on that side so this become plus this term on that side so this becomes plus this term on that side so this become minus this is minus on that side this become plus so now now you can see m a plus i can take small m a as common from all of them so it will be 1 plus cos square alpha minus 2 cos alpha plus sin square alpha now cos square alpha plus sin square alpha is 1 so capital m a plus small m into a in bracket 1 plus 1 minus 2 cos alpha in place of sin square alpha plus cos square alpha i have written 1 capital m a plus small m capital a 1 plus 1 2 2 minus 2 cos alpha so i can take a as common and a will be equal to mg sin alpha upon capital m plus small m 2 outside 1 minus cos alpha so that is the acceleration of the wedge in this direction thank you